This is the extraordinary tale of a family, a captivating narrative that unfolds as they find themselves face to face with a relentless shark during their exhilarating surf adventure. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the true story of the Peltier family ripped apart by a bull shark. Welcome to Exclusion. The sun hung low in the late summer sky, casting a warm, golden hue over the serene expanse of Sandbridge Beach. It was the first day of September in 2001, a day that should have been like any other for the Peltier family, a day of bonding, laughter, and surf, with the promise of a long Labor Day weekend. Richard Peltier, an adoring father, couldn't wait to spend quality time with his sons, David and Robert, and his stepson, Josh Sowers. The Peltier family had traveled from Glen Allen, just outside Richmond, Virginia, to the picturesque shores of Sandbridge Beach, Virginia Beach, Princess and County. Their destination was nestled along the Atlantic Ocean, a place where the waves beckoned and memories were meant to be made. However, little did they know that this day would soon become meshed into their collective memory as a harrowing tale of courage, resilience, and the awe-inspiring power of the sea. The day dawned with perfect weather, partly cloudy skies, a gentle southwesterly breeze, and an air temperature that flirted with the pleasant mark of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 degrees Celsius. The sea, usually tranquil and inviting, stretched out before them, its waves promising endless adventure. The Peltier boys, their eyes alight with excitement, clutched their surfboards, ready to ride the gentle swells of the Atlantic. As the family entered the water, their laughter mingled with the sound of crashing waves, creating a symphony of joy that echoed along the shoreline. Richard, the ever watchful father, stood sentinel on a sandbar, content in the knowledge that he could keep a vigilant eye on his children. Little did he know that this day would demand every ounce of his protective instinct. The hours passed in a blissful blower, with the Peltier family savoring the sun, sand, and surf. Richard, a veteran surfer, couldn't have been happier watching his boys grow confident in the water. Yet, as the clock ticked toward evening, an ominous shadow lurked just beneath the surface, unbeknownst to the family. Richard's trained eyes caught a fleeting glimpse of the sinister silhouette, lurking barely a meter away from his youngest son, David, his heart raced as he recognized the impending danger, his instincts flaring with urgency. In an adrenaline-fueled surge of fatherly protection, he moved with lightning speed to pick David up and place him safely on his surfboard. But, as fate would have it, the dark and malevolent predator beneath the surface was quicker. With astonishing speed, a massive bull shark closed the gap between them its predatory instinct staking over. Before Richard could react, the ocean's apex predator struck. The tranquil afternoon erupted into chaos as the massive predator clamped its powerful jewels around David's thigh. A horrifying struggle ensued, with Richard desperately attempting to pry open the relentless grip of the beast. The shark swung its head back and forth, like a macabre pendulum of death leaving a trail of gruesome destruction on David's young body. The beach, once filled with the sounds of laughter and crashing waves, now reverberated with piercing screams and panic. Richard, with sheer determination and fatherly love, pounded on the shark's head and prodded its unyielding eye, fighting with every fiber of his being to protect his son. The ocean's relentless predator, however, showed no mercy, continuing its brutal assault. As lifeguards and first responders raced to the scene, the beach became a tableau of terror and heroism. Despite his own injuries, Richard remained steadfast, holding on to David and offering comfort amid the chaos. Witnesses watched in as a father's love and determination transcended the horrors of nature. 
Paramedics arrived with urgency, immediately starting CPR. David, his small body battered and broken, was swiftly transported to Centara, Virginia Beach General Hospital, a level two trauma center. The young boy's life now hung in the balance, and the Peltier family's world had been irrevocably shattered. In the agonizing hours that followed, the family clung to hope and prayed for a miracle. But David's injuries were severe, and despite the tireless efforts of the medical team, he could not escape the clutches of hypovolemic shock brought on by the massive blood loss. Tragically, slightly more than 20 hours after the vicious attack, David Peltier succumbed to his injuries. The Sandbridge Beach community was left in a state of shock and mourning. The sudden loss of a young life and the incredible bravery of a father who had fought valiantly to protect his child from the jaws of nature's most formidable predator left an indelible mark on their collective consciousness. As investigators combed through the details of the incident, questions arose about the presence of sharks in the area and the circumstances leading up to the attack. While the investigation continued, the story of David Peltier and his father's heroic struggle against the relentless ocean predator would forever be etched into the annals of Sandbridge Beach, a haunting reminder of both the breathtaking beauty and perilous unpredictability of the sea. The incident also raised questions about the environmental factors that play on that tragic day. Sandbridge Beach, a picturesque sand spit enclosing a freshwater area with no outlet to the sea, was a serene backdrop to this harrowing event. The homes that crowded the coast, protected by a seawall with steps leading from the beach to the properties, bore witness to the unfolding tragedy. Witnesses reported that the attack took place on the sandbar directly opposite Pacific Homes on Sand Fiddler Road. Pods of bottlenose dolphins frequently graced the area, and on the day of the attack, Five of these majestic creatures were observed merely 600 yards offshore. This phenomenon was not unusual, as the region was known for its large pods of dolphins passing along the shore, often coming within 50 feet of the beach. Intriguingly, nearby fishing boats had been chumming the waters just 500 yards off the beach on the day of the attack. Local fishermen were well aware of the various shark species in the area, including sandbar sharks, sand tiger sharks, hammerheads, tiger sharks, and bull sharks. Smooth dogfish and skates were also seen on the seafloor at the attack site during an underwater survey conducted the following day. Notably, shark fishing tackle was discovered on the southern side of the beach access area. The tackle bore a unique characteristic. It wasn't crimped. It was meticulously tied. Local experts at Sportsman's Den and Harry's Army and Navy noted that such a rig was typically used by experienced anglers to catch brown sharks, known as Carcharhinus plumbius. The presence of this tackle and its condition strongly suggested that sharks had been actively fished in the immediate vicinity of the attack site during the week preceding the tragedy. Broken remnants of plastic chumbicuts strewn near the high tide mark hinted at recent fishing activity. The proximity of the shark tackle and its unconventional rigging raised further questions. Had this tackle been lost or abandoned after a late night fishing expedition? The timing was significant since shark fishing commonly occurred in Tawan, 